All right, what's up guys? Time for a little Friday training. Just me today, you don't get my beautiful assistant. So um, what we are going to do, you guys are going to start off with a six minute clock for your warm up. We're gonna do 24 high knees in place, followed by 24 butt kickers in place, followed by six push ups from your knees or from your toes. Just focus on that full range of motion to so make sure the chest gets down to the ground, make sure the belly stays tight and you don't break that midline in any way. And then you are going to do three side plank rotations per side with a five second hold after each. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to be in a good side plank. I'm going to go start from a T. I'm going to rotate all the way through, try and touch the room behind me back up to a T and then I'm gonna hold for five seconds. Repeat that two more times. And then I'm gonna switch over to the other side and do the same exact thing. So that's gonna be your warm up on a six minute clock. And then once we're done, we got a whole bunch of skill work. So we are going to spend some time doing upside down Z stuff. So how it's gonna work. We're gonna start, you're gonna do three sets of everything. We're gonna do a crow pose, then we're gonna do a headstand, followed by a handstand, followed by 10 shoulder taps. So, start from the bottom. Now we're here. Um, 10 second crow pose. Again, for this, what we're looking to do is prime the positions that we're gonna be in for the handstand or for the headstand. So the hands are gonna be just outside of shoulder width. Then I'm going to break at the elbow so that you notice I get a little resting place for my knees on my triceps. And then from there, I'm gonna gently try and push off my toes and find balance. And what we're really working on here is solidifying a good position with the hands and also learning how to use the fingers for a little bit for balance. So you should be kind of gripping into the floor like you would with your toes if you were trying to avoid falling over. We're gonna do three sets of 10 there. Then we're gonna move up to a 10 second headstand. So we're gonna go from this position and then we're gonna work on bringing the head down to the floor and creating a tripod. Most important thing is that I have a neutral neck when I come down to my head. So what I don't wanna do is look for the ab mat and I also don't want to overly tuck my chin so that I create a little bit of a curve back here. I want a nice neutral gaze. So from this position, same exact start, and then I'm gonna rock into my crow pose. And then once I find a little bit of balance, I'm going to bring my head to the ground. If you would like, you can bring the feet up. This is gonna be RX plus stage one. And then RX plus stage two is going to be toes up and finding some balance here. Make sure that you control back down and exit the exact same way that you went in. So again, a headstand can be any one of those three positions. It can be head on the ground, resting with the knees on the elbows still. It can be that tripod where I bring my knees off of my body and I flatten out my lower back. Or it can be a full headstand where I bring my legs all the way up to straight. As you do all of those, paying attention to your midline is really crucial. So making sure that you don't release that belly brace and you don't allow yourself to overextend and have those feet come up behind you. If you're worried about that, you may want to do this with a wall nearby, just so that you have a little bit of a safety barrier there as well. After that, we've got 10 second handstands. So again, you can do that in any way, shape or form that you see fit. So I would definitely recommend going to the wall. You can do either a kick up to the wall, you can do a wall walk up to the wall, or if you're comfortable, you may do a freestanding handstand. But all we're looking to do is to really try and carry over that tripod shoulder loading that we started with down here when we get over to the wall. Um, you can also do that variation on a plank. So if you'd like to, you can do it with feet on a box and then I can just push up on my tippy toes and work from here. So that is another option, another variation that you can take as well. Then we're gonna do 10 shoulder taps from whatever variation you worked on. So I want you to try and perform a full shoulder tap today. So if that means going to an easier version of the handstand, which would mean feet on a box of pipe would be your easiest version of the handstand. Um, you're gonna do shoulder taps from there. Most important thing when we do these is that we learn how to shift our weight a little bit. 
So just like if I was gonna go from standing straight up to balancing on one leg, you notice I push off this other foot a little bit and I shift my weight and then same thing when I go to switch to the other side. It's the exact same thing when I go to do a shoulder tap. So I'm gonna show you these from a pike so you can see a little bit. So I'm gonna first off find that good pike position up on the tippy toes. Now when I go to pick my hand up, you notice I push away so that I can find a little bit of balance on that one arm. And that's a crucial mechanic as you start to go to the handstand walk is learning that weight shifting. So that's gonna be your skill work for the day. Each of those movements, four of them, three sets each, 10 seconds or 10 reps in the case of the shoulder tap. Reason being that we're doing all that stuff is because we've got some upside down Z's in our workout today. So workout is for time, we've got a chipper. You're gonna go for an 800 meter run, perform 50 double unders. You are going to go 25 handstand push-ups or 50 push-ups. And then you're gonna do 100 double unders before working your way back down. So 25 handstand push-ups, 50 dubs, and then an 800 meter run. So that's your format. There's a 20 minute time cap. So I think this time cap's a little generous, which means push yourself today on skills. So pick a skill that's challenging, whether that's doing the handstand push-ups, even though it's a little bit maybe outside of your comfort zone, but you have them. And then same thing if you're gonna scale the push-ups, pick a challenging scale. You're more than welcome to spend a couple minutes at the station. So you can spend a couple minutes on your handstand push-ups each time and still have enough time to finish this workout. So we want you guys to push yourself a little bit there today. Now let's talk scaling options. So 800 meter run, uh, I would definitely, it's gonna be nice tomorrow, so I'll go for a run if you can. Otherwise, uh, you can do a 1,000 meter ski erg or row. You can do a 2,000 meter bike erg, or you can do a 50 and 40 calorie assault bike. So 50 for the guys and then 40 for the ladies. Those are your options for machine stuff. After that, we've got double unders. So 50 dubs, 100 dubs, and 50 dubs. So you've got three sets of double unders today. I want you to cap yourself at a minute and a half for the sets of 50 and I want you to cap yourself at three minutes for your set of 100. Those are pretty generous time caps, so ideally I want you to be a little bit under there, but use that as your scaling reference. So when you get back from your run or you get off your machine, take a look at the clock, and if you have double unders but you're not sure if you have enough reps or you have all of the reps that are prescribed, hold to those time frames. After a minute and a half is passed off of the clock, I want you to move on with the rest of the workout. Otherwise, you can scale the single unders and you can go two to one if you're super confident with single unders, or you can do one to one if you're still working on your jump rope skills a little bit. And that is all the scaling we need to talk about for our workout. So again, for the handstand push-ups, uh, let's talk movements now. So for the handstand push-ups here, we really focused on the headstand, the crow pose, all those things, and we want to keep those positions in mind when we go to do handstand push-ups. So when I'm set up for a handstand push-up against the wall, the bottom should still look like this. It should look like a tripod, meaning my hands are out in front of my head. And if I had a wall behind my back, this is essentially what I should look like. Far too often we see people in a straight line and you wouldn't be able to balance there. I'll demo now. So if I were in a straight line here, I would immediately roll off screen. But that's often what people do when they get against the wall because they have the wall there as a brace. It's not a good balance position and it's not a strong pressing position. So keep in mind the warm up drills that we did when you get up against the wall for your handstand push ups during the workout. If you're doing push ups, again, we're just looking for chest to deck, great body position and push ups. So if you are going to scale, or sorry, if you can't maintain this position in the bottom of a push-up where just my touch, chest touches the ground, elbows are tucked in, coming back to full extension without breaking the midline, then I want you to modify by bringing your hands up onto a box. If you're at the gym, you're also more than welcome to do a push press variation. So you could do that with two dumbbells, dip, drive overhead, or you could do that with a barbell, same thing, dip, driving, up overhead. So those are scaling options as well. That is your workout today. After that, our accessory, we've got three sets, 20 tricep extensions. If you're in the gym, feel free to do these with a band. So a band around the pull-up ring, and then we're just gonna go from 90, press down to full extension, back up to 90, 
for 20 reps. If you're at home, you can do an overhead variation. So take your kettlebell or your dumbbell. We're gonna start with it locked out overhead, bring it back behind the head to find the elbows at 90, and then press back up to extension. 20 reps either way. And then we're gonna do 15 single leg calf raises. So find yourself a little bit of a deficit. I'll just use the bottom of the bike here. Ideally, I would be a little bit higher, so a stair might be a perfect option if you have access to that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a nice stretch in the calf, so we're gonna let the heel drop down to the ground, and then we're gonna press all the way up to full extension of the ankle, or as high as you can. And you're gonna do 15 of those per side. We're gonna do three sets of that accessory. Once we're done there, your mobility, we have a one minute doorway stretch per side. So what we're gonna do there is I'm gonna take my hand up against the door, bicep parallel to the ground, and then I'm just gonna step through and open up my chest away from this arm. Feeling a stretch in the chest after all of this pressing that we did today. Then we're gonna turn right around, and we're gonna hit a one minute runner stretch on either side. So supporting against the wall, knee is bent, elbows driving, or sorry, elbow, heel is driving down towards the ground, stretching out the calf and the Achilles a little bit. And that's gonna be one minute per side as well. That is your training for Friday. Enjoy it. Finish off the week strong, the work week anyway. And we will see you guys back tomorrow for your final day of training for the week. As always, tag us, forged by, <coughs> excuse me, forged by Zeus, palace.fitness, and we'll see you guys back tomorrow.